break down the different drugs that have been used that there have been that overdose with. And this is really all around Bloomington. In fact, when you go to the website, you can really zoom in down to the street level and find out where this is all taking place. And the city calls this data a blessing. Others call it a curse. The best recipe for success in terms of um, addressing problems is by making data more accessible. That's why city leaders created Bloomington Revealed in March. They say the website shows that the crisis knows no boundaries from wealthy neighborhoods to public places. But those who have been robbed of a loved one are, due to drugs are outraged. It looks exactly like a, a many sex offender registries and sex offender apps where you can just pull up a Google map and look at how many people have overdosed and died around in your neighborhood. I do feel like it's a public shaming. I also feel it is hurting the surviving families that are still living in those residents. Some of the other concerns out there is that someone may go to that website, identify where an overdose took place, and potentially try to go to that home to buy drugs. Mm -hmm. Leaders did meet last night to discuss all of this, but they have not decided about any changes. So what are some specifics here, Matt? Well, going to that website, I was able to find there have been 54 drug overdoses in Bloomington since 2015. And of that number, it's really interesting, 15 of those deaths have taken place around Walnut Street. So that's an example of an area where police know to kind of target. That's some of the data they're finding and trying to put that to the public. So again, still kind of a controversial issue, and they're still deciding on it here this morning. All right, Matt, thank you. And as always, if someone you know is struggling with addiction, it's not too late to get help. If you're looking for resources, go to WTHR.com slash addicted. We have links to several groups and websites that can help you locally. 605, police in Lebanon are hoping a recent drug bust there will help cut down on the growing addiction crisis across our state. Yeah, after pulling a man over for a traffic stop, police say they found more than a thousand doses of meth. According to our partners at the Lebanon Reporter, Andre Ellis is now facing several charges for possession and dealing drugs. Police say the 42-year-old was changing lanes without signaling when he was pulled over. Then they searched that car and found 115 grams of crystal meth along with heroin and weed. Ellis is set to go on trial a little later this fall. Well, this morning we're getting a better idea of that amazing rescue, eff rescue effort out in Thailand that saved an entire soccer team. Of course, the story really caught the entire world's attention for weeks as rescue teams tried to figure out the best way to bring everybody out to safety. And as we've reported, much of the two-mile escape route was uh, from the cave, and it was submerged in water, and none of the boys, of course, knew how to swim. So rescuers put face masks on the boys and then really carried them under the water, squeezing through these narrow passageways mm. using this rope. The final trek to freedom took four hours or more for each child. So now the Navy SEALs who were in the cave helping say they aren't sure if it was really a miracle or science that helped They're them. They're probably scratching their heads this morning, really. So now that everyone